So let me just show you this part. Uh, it's not a full lecture, but I think I'm actually going to end this session early. Um, so really the only thing that's uh, not already in the lectures here and that uh, in thinking about that, uh, I thought I maybe I should do it was um, because sometimes these um, sophisticated mathematical tools, people get lost in their sophistication because um, uh, depending on, uh, and uh, I did learn like a year or two ago that not every pre-calculus trigonometry class covers Euler's formula that I think they should. <laughs> so as you is as you go into higher level science and engineering, the thing that matters most is not the specific formulas that you might have learned. It, uh, uh, it's what we call mathematical maturity because you are always going to find the things that oh, you didn't learn. Either you should have learned and somehow it wasn't taught to you or maybe it's uh, the kind of thing, a special function that you wouldn't be expected to know before you encounter a problem which requires that special function to solve. So, um, so as you go into your science and engineering career, what really matters the most is mathematical maturity. And as important as mathematical maturity is, it's a hard thing to really define precisely. Because a lot of that uh, comes down to willingness to work through a difficult concept willingness to uh, learn and work out or figure out rules of algebra, willingness to um, carry out symbolic calculations. So I'm saying it's hard to define. So the best way to illustrate mathematical maturity, I think is through example. And there's a really wonderful example in Feynman lectures. So. Uh, I think I mentioned the Feynman lectures before. Um, so Feynman lectures on physics, it's a classic, uh, even though it covers topics in a totally non-standard sequence. I do highly strongly recommend it. Um, when you look at, and there's one particular section in Feynman lectures that I want to refer to. Oh, wait. Uh, I think it's in volume one. It might be in, vo ah, yes, it's in volume one. Uh, in volume one. There's a, a chapter that's called algebra. <laughs> you might wonder, algebra, I, I thought, and, and you know, like somewhere around in these chapters, he's already breaking out integral calculus. So he's not teaching you algebra, like teaching you how to um, carry out, um, you know, how to do arithmetic and how to factor, how to, he's not teaching you that. Um, I think he, the way in which he's talking about algebra is more of a uh, special message. Mm, yeah. it's, uh, uh, <laughs> it, it connects to that mathematical maturity that I was talking about. So it, it's a really great summarization. So I want to point you here. I want to strongly recommend uh, reading through this, and one of the reasons is because he really introduces complex exponentials well here. And um, he builds that up from uh, from ground. Um, so one of the worst mistakes I've made in teaching physics for B in, in the past was uh, assuming that everyone just knew this. And the thing is, uh, either well, once again, either somehow it was never taught to you or um, or sometimes when it is taught in pre-calculus and trigonometry, it's not taught with the proper emphasis. So it's uh, uh, kind of glossed over. Um, and um, Feynman builds up to that. He doesn't just uh, throw it at you. So the way he builds up to it is by reviewing the things you know, um, reviewing the things you know about addition and multiplication, which sound simple, but you know, we have to, uh, there's a value in reviewing the, the rules that you have learned to abstract out um, uh, kind of principle or uh, abstract out something that's applicable to beyond just the things you learned. So, so you know, looking at addition and multiplication, which, uh, um, you know, which uh, all these rules, I think uh, um, either you've seen it before or you can kind of say, oh yeah, that makes a sense. Uh, this is called associative property and hopefully all of that, um, if 
someone says this, that, that you don't look at them like they're telling you something you don't know. So these are the things you know. Um, and starting out with these, uh, starting out with the, these uh, relationships, I and J, Feynman talks about the inverse operations. This is how we introduce uh, subtraction and, um, and, and I can't find the word, uh, and division. And this is a way of how you build up um, things that you didn't have before. So you can, um, you can devise what subtraction, subtraction operation does from the things we knew above of, with the addition and multiplication. And this is uh, like the first extension. We are introducing new operations. Again, the things we already know, but we are looking at it from a more um, abstractly uh, minded uh, set. And here is where he talks about abstraction and generalization uh, more explicitly. And, and you know, I, I thought, okay, um, I, well, less than halfway through. And then he goes into um, other things that get introduced. So, um, I think, uh, let's see, uh, does it talk about the rational number? Well, rational number comes up in division, I think. Uh, once you have divisions like this, then, uh, then you have, uh, yeah, have rational numbers. Well, um, yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah, yeah. So here, as is describing generalization, this is uh, what is getting at. So if we are thinking only of um, rational numbers, then uh, equation like this is impossible to solve because um, because there's no um, uh, ratio or a fraction of uh, integers that would. Uh, give you something that's equal to this thing. And in fact, yeah, he's telling a story here. This is a whole thing about the Pythagoras cult in Greece. Uh, I forget if their position was that these didn't exist or they existed, doesn't matter, but it, it was a, a kind of a mathematical discovery of the ancients. And, um, and he is talking about the, these irrational numbers. <laughs> <laughs> the getting those very unfortunate name because uh, there's nothing irrational about irrational numbers. It's very um, I don't know root phobic uh, <laughs> description. Um, so so these uh, irrational numbers they arise from uh, considering algebraic expressions like this. And continuing in that fashion, that's the point of the abstraction generalization. He, uh, this is about approximating. He um, introduces, again, I do highly recommend that you read it through this. I'm just uh, skipping through it. And you know, this will give you um, deeper understanding of uh, things like Euler's number, where it comes from. And uh, and he introduces complex number. So he's again getting at the question: Are there algebraic equations that we can't solve? And uh, this is one that we still can't solve. Uh, it's kind of uh, going back to the top of the chapter and down to here. Um, so you know, this is the question: Is there a number such that when you square it, you get minus one? And with the numbers we've introduced so far, integers, uh, positive and negative, rational numbers, irrational numbers, um, there's no number of these categories, all of which combined we call them real number, that where if we square, we would get minus one. So this is where uh, we introduce something new. Uh, we introduce uh, something that it's called imaginary number, and this is also another one of those names that reveal people's biases. There's nothing imaginary about imaginary number. It's very real. It's very uh, relevant. It describes real systems. But in any case, um, we introduce this to describe, uh, to be able to solve this equation. And that's the start of the complex numbers. And and, and and this is the discourse. And you know, all of this, uh, there's a value in seeing this now because a lot of this would be review. So um, 
introducing these numbers, it takes a lot of conceptual work. And uh, you would, if you are seeing this only for the first time, like going at the pace that Feynman is doing, you know, covering basically history of numbers in one lecture, that would be very uh, heavy lift. But because it's a review, you can look at it and develop a sense of understanding and appreciation for things that you already knew. And you see these algebraic rules, which look very complicated. And, and then he, um, yeah, and he, the approximation thing that he was doing above, it's good to read because, uh, read and understand because in, it's in understanding that, that as he goes through here, that you will see the connection that he, you will see him draw. Uh, when you have these imaginary exponents, how those imaginary exponents have a, have a connection to the oscillatory functions that you've seen elsewhere, cosine and sine. And uh, that's where it comes down to this. And, and, and th this is really one of the most uh, remarkable relationships that you see at all levels of science and engineering. Basically, uh, anytime you're dealing with an oscillatory phenomena, you would be using this somewhere, somehow, or um, you should be using it because um, <laughs> a lot of calculations get simplified when you use, uh, make use of this expression. So, so yeah, this is, uh, again, I, you know, if you're reading through it carefully, it might take you several hours. And I do strongly re recommend that investment of time. This is in uh, volume one of Feynman Lectures on Physics, uh, chapter 22, Algebra. This is probably the uh, single best uh, written introduction to complex exponentials that I can share with you. So.